We've got our, what I call, our scroll saw doctor. And on Facebook, I pass his name back to people. And he has clientele that he has done saws for from, from ocean to ocean, and from Canada to Mexico. They've sent him stuff, and plus the middle of the United States, Kansas and whatever. They sent him a saw. Uh, last one, I think they, they sent him a saw that they had taken three times to the DeWalt Service Center and it still hadn't fixed it, so they sent it to him to fix. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be kind of limited on my movement today. I'm still recovering from knee surgery from a couple of months ago. To kind of set the stage here, about 2006, I uh, I didn't have a drill saw before then, so I went and got a used one. Started working away on the thing, and then people people started asking me questions about, well, you you seem to know a lot about. You know how to use a scroll saw? Can you can you fix them? You know, so I think my first client was this lady that brought one over. It was making making terrible noise. Uh, matter of fact, I think she got it from George. <laughs> <laughs> he, he knew it was making noise and told her. Then was when I kind of got an introduction to how to how to break into one of these things and, and start fixing them. And then then they started. Uh, you know, people understood that I knew how to how to do something with these things. I just you know, seem to know how to, how to work on machinery. So they'd, uh, they'd keep rolling in about every three months I'd get one and then and it's about every two months and then it's at least once a month. Last time I was out there somebody brought three to you from Chicago. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got people driving them in from out of state, shipping them in from all over the country. After a while I began to you know, get faster at uh, working on these things and identifying various problems that were in there. About 2012, after I'd worked on about 12 of these saws by that time, I decided that, gee, it's, it's time that I, you know, kind of share this knowledge with the, the rest of the world. So I started, uh, started working on doing a, a YouTube video on how I do what I do, and it turned out to be a, you know, four episode epic. It drew a lot of attention, and then uh, a few years later, Hans started testing me. Anyway, can you do an update for that? My saw was broken. I needed to fix. So yeah. We, we, so I was able to to give him a broken saw so he could fix it. <laughs> so anyway, I started uh, started doing that for Hans. So about once a year, he'd uh, he'd come to me and you know, can can you do another update? He started testing me again this year about you know what uh, what are you gonna do for me this year? And finally, at the woodworking show, we developed a, a really good victim. This one, we had a we had a big long booth, you know, ten by ten by forty, ten by fifty, something like that. And I could hear this thing from the other end of the booth. Once I got into this saw, I I, uh, I called Hans up. I said, I got I got a good candidate for here. How many of you have seen the inside of one of these scroll saws before? Okay, this is a, about half the audience. The whole principle of one of these things is that it takes and moves a five inch long blade up and down in the front really fast. And the way it does that, there's some transfer of motion that takes place between these rocker assemblies in the front. So the parallel rocker arms up front here and here. And those things are driven by two linkages here. You know, this one here, and there's another one inside this tube that you can't see. But we will, uh, we will see it before the evening's over. More mechanism here, there's a, a vertical rocker that takes care of the transfer of motion from this motor through this uh, vertical rocker and then these these two linkages go back and forth. And Bob, Very all those similar. all those bear, all those buried bearings in there are all sealed, right? No. They're not sealed. There's there's one sealed bearing, this one. Oh, oh. Okay. Every, everything else in here is an open needle bearing. Not entirely sure why they did it that way. I think it was a carryover because the this original design for the wall, this thing was kind of built in the in the heyday of when uh, Dewalt was trying to make a, a bit of a name change in themselves. They were owned by Black and Decker. Black and Decker was normally intended for the homeowner. I guess a bunch of executives decided that they were going to they were going to take the 
the DeWalt name and make that into more crass type of a name. At the time, they didn't have a scroll saw, so what they did is they bought the right from uh, Excalibur, started out with, uh, that, with that basic design, repackaged it a bit. Some of the repackaging included making this the side so that it would come off, make this side so that it would come off so that the thing was serviceable. The Excalibur has an entirely different concept. They've got a cover across the back that follows this profile. That comes off and then you, anything that you need to get to, you got to pull it out through the back. It's, uh, I have worked on a few of those. Don't care to repeat the experience <laughs> if I could avoid it. Anyway, I was about to turn it on. Turn it on there. I'll run it at low speed for you so you can get the concept of what goes on here. What you've got here is a eccentric shaft on a motor that rotates the bearing here and it's got a connecting rod doing what connecting rods are meant to do. They're, they're, they will deal with an eccentric path. It drives this uh, vertical rocker which then transfers the motion to these two linkages that we talked about. It goes up forward to a, a bearing that is right behind here that we will expose here shortly. And it transfers the, the motion to these two vertical rockers. And that's why they call it that's why they call it parallel arms? Yep. Now the blade goes straight up and down. It remains completely vertical the whole time. The only thing that it does do is it does move forward and back slightly. There's, uh, there's only a couple of saws on the market that don't do that, and they are uh, pretty, pretty pricey. Okay, normally these saws are supposed to be, you know, very quiet. <laughs> this one could uh, could start making some noise here based on the problem that I know it's got Probably already. More now. that it made uh, mm -hmm. there as the speed got on up, it is not supposed to do that. So normally what I'll do when I'm diagnosing one of these saws, take the tension off the front, and I will begin by moving this up and down to see what moves and what, whether there's any slop in it or not. And I finally decided that based on what I saw there that the problem was back here with this, this vertical rocker. So I started peeling the covers apart on this thing. One of the first things that I noticed when I got it apart, you notice this powder down in the bottom of here. Down in this region here. That's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be completely dry. That is an indication that something has come apart in here. The very first scroll saw that I that I took apart, um, there was probably two ounces worth of that powder in there. I was I was utterly amazed once I got into it that it was still working at all. I mean, there was a lot of stuff flopping around inside there. So a lot of so is that metal fragments? Those are metal fragments. So then I started trying to figure out where they're coming from. And I noticed the, uh, the mate to those metal fragments was here. There's also more of them on here. In fact, I was just pushing them around there. And also on top of here. So that's telling me that, that it's all involved around this, this vertical rocker. So it wasn't, uh, I managed to stick this thing back together that it won't misbehave, but I, I started moving some stuff around and I soon figured out that this is not supposed to be that loose. <laughs> it has come completely off of the bearing, the one seal bearing in the machine, and this is actually an old style part because what they've done with the newer ones is they punch in a mortise into this uh, connecting rod so that they can press the bearing in place and there's also a, uh, a 
ring, a slot in there for a snap ring. This was one of the problems with the, uh, the older model, or the older version of this connecting rod, is that uh, eventually, after some years of use, uh, this bearing would come loose. This is probably one of the worst cases I've seen. So I figured this would be a good candidate to show you guys what, uh, what needs to be done to get into one of these saws. This happens to be one of the saws that the uh, club has, and we have called this saw the Phoenix because we've basically put it together from pieces of saws that we've got all over the place. If you notice, the color's not the same between the top and the bottom. <laughs> the head, the, the top one going across is a different color than the bottom. So, so, yep. And we'll turn it off. Yep. One of the things that, when you're working on these things, one of the things you want to be cautious about is to have a parts container close by. And I like to use these magnetic bowls. That way, when I take the uh, take the parts out, I got a place to put them. Okay, Hans was talking about this this blade tensioner up here. Got it. Mm hmm. You want me to take it up? Yep. Okay, there's what the underside of that looks like. There's a there's a travel way in there that this bearing fits in. So as you rotate that thing, this this uh, follower goes along there and operates this operates this draw rod that transfers motion back to this plate back here. So as I, as the draw rod tightens, it raises the arm. Like that. Still to be able to get this thing off, we need to take some other stuff loose here. What kind of screws are those, Bob? Torx. Okay, we've got a good opportunity here. If I can hold this thing to where Buzz can see this. This part here is normally at this height all the way to the rear. The only, the only reason for doing this, this operation is to make room for this counterweight here what will happen is this counterweight, when you're running the saw at, a, at very high speed and you're cutting some heavy material, what will wind up happening is this counterweight will contact the bottom of this adjusting plate. So in order to stop that, you didn't need all this material on the tail end here, which is where the contact is made. It, it's made back in like the last quarter inch of this. So what I do is I just chamfer it from the back to the front. So that's one of the modifications that I make, you know, on a pretty much a standard basis when I take one of these saws apart. Next thing we're gonna do here is take this linkage loose. Tell me who. Yep, I think it's loose now, yep. Okay, this is the screw that holds the, the linkage to the, the front rocker assembly. And I <laughs> took that away. You need to make sure that washer's on, on that side. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are those all the same size screws? Yes. Oops. You want to take it out? Yep. Okay. One of the things that I want to, wanted to particularly show in here that you've got to be careful of when you're 
working on one of these. There's, there's two thrust washers on here. There's, there's one of them right there. I'll give Buzz a second to uh, get focused in on it. One there. Okay. There is another one over here. And those things are really fussy about their location. There's a sleeve that goes all the way through there. I might as well poke it out because we're gonna we're gonna want to inspect this anyway while we got it this far apart. I got that. I got the ring in the washer. Okay, that is the the sleeve for the drive link. And this one's just got some good honest wear to it. I'll let uh, let Buzz focus in on that. Now, what I do when I'm servicing one of these, I will, I will take and clean that thing off thoroughly and then move it while I'm looking at it to see if it starts shining flat spots at me. When it shines flat spots at you, that's a bad thing. That tells you that this, this bearing, if we can raise the camera up to here, that bearing there is what, what mates up with that sleeve. Okay, while we're talking about bearings and sleeves, uh, we've got within here, there are 12 identical bearings. There's one inside of there, same spot in the front, another one inside there. There's uh, one inside this part here, and then two of them, one on each side over here for a total of 12 bearings. They're distributed between these, uh, these two uh, rockers, you know, the horizontal rockers in the front and rear, and the remaining two bearings are at the end of the linkage. Are all those at similar, the back. Bob? They're all identical. They're all identical, okay. One other thing, Bob, take it back over there. One other thing. Oh. See the bellow. And sometimes yep. what'll happen is that bellow will crack because what happens is when the when these arms go up and down, it presses on the bellow, and that's what creates the uh, the air that that yeah. This this rocker going up and down here like this yeah you know, hits that bellows and pushes a bit of air out there. So that's what uh, that's blows what blows the uh, blows your, the sawdust away from the blade. Line. So if it's not blowing off your line, that may be one of your problems. Is that bellow may be broken. It's not an easy place to get to. Yep. Mm, no. You don't want it in there? No. Okay. It's too hard to find with all the rest of the stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm taking out the other the other drive link screw here in preparation to take this this rocker out. Okay. So this is what you do all along the Yep. Yeah, I kind of shocked one of my customers one time. He, he came over to my shop and, I, you know, we talked about his saw and so forth. And next next thing you know, we're, we're talking and just having a good old time. And then he, then he realized all of a sudden that, oh, wait a minute, my, my saw is in pieces. <laughs> they're, they're pretty easy to take apart. Okay, with those two, I'll put these back in here. So you know, yeah, put them in there. Okay, with those two major assemblies off of there, the two horizontal rockers, upper and lower. Uh, with those out of there, we can now attack the back end. There's very, very few parts involved in doing that. Okay, now then, this, uh, this brings me to the point where Hans wanted me to show you something new. Well, this is one of the techniques that I learned for getting this, this part out pretty easily. You take and turn this linkage assembly this direction, and then extract the whole thing out through the rear without having to take anything else apart. So that gets me access to the vertical rocker and the linkage. 
but since, uh, since we've got an issue with uh, this character here, which shouldn't, shouldn't have happened, another technique that I came up with for, for getting this thing apart is I found out that using a 19 millimeter wrench will get a hold of that counterweight. That counterweight is there to be able to handle the uh, eccentric shaft on that motor. To, uh, to offset that, to eliminate the vibration. Okay. And then how many of you think I'm about to tighten that thing? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is one of the things that I want to stress is this is a left-hand thread. It's the only left-hand thread in the machine. Don't ask me how I learned that. <laughs> There is nothing in a service manual that tells you. And if you, if you snap that thing off, the, uh, the only solution to that thing is a new motor. DeWalt is just really proud of them. But, $300. Well, two, $265. And shipping. Did you ever find any more from that source we found? Yes. I was telling Hans that I got a call the other day from a uh, shop teacher in uh, Seattle, Washington. Turned out he had a, what we determined to be a bad motor. One of the ways that, what, that you determine that is you get a hold of these, uh, these two leads that come from, yeah, they come from, uh, directly from the motor, you pull those two loose, stick an ohmmeter across there, and you rotate the motor by hand. No. It's these these two wires here and here. So you can just pull those off of the the circuit board here, stick a stick an ohmmeter across them and read that thing while you rotate it. And you should see a pretty constant resistance. If it goes to zero, that's not a good thing. <laughs> His was reading mostly zero. <laughs> I think it's kind of stuck on there with some, probably some Loctite. There it went. Okay. Now that we've got enough of that stuff out of there, Keep going. Sure. Yep. I'm behind the saw. Sorry. Yep. Just something to push that bearing out. Or that sleeve, rather. I didn't want to lose it. Okay. Let's do this one over here where Buzz can see it. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this, this is one of these uh, 12 sleeves that are in here. Again, from what I see of them, they're, they're in very good shape. I don't see any facets showing at me. Okay, so the next, uh, next trick is to, by the way, in, in answer to that question, I, these uh, replacement bearings that are in here, they are, they are pressed in. I use that little, that little arbor press there that I got from Harbor Freight. It was a real good investment. But you uh, press the bearings into place. You put one bearing on top of another one. You put a new bearing on top of the old one and press it through. And I get the bearings from a company called VXB in California. Okay, I've got the 
the bolt out of here, there's a knurled area on each of these washers. The knurled area goes toward the, the moving part, like the, uh, the head of the screw or the, the nut. Okay, now then, this uh, connecting rod here has a sleeve through the end. And the trick is to try to get that thing out of there. <laughs> I wrestled and wrestled with techniques for trying to do that. And finally, after, after a couple of dozen saws, no. I finally came up with one that was just uh, unbelievably easy. You know, that big uh, taper pin there and the ball peen hammer. I think I passed the school saw nursing. This is a nursing day, right? Yeah. While you're doing that, I've got a problem over here. Because I don't know which one goes in the top and which one goes in the bottom. They're both the same, so it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. But I set them down and I said, oh, crap. <laughs> They look the same. Oh, okay. okay. What I found is this is this is malleable aluminum. And to be able to get this aluminum to spread apart to let go of that sleeve, I put this taper pin in there. Give that thing a couple of whacks. What, it, what it's doing is it's spreading it apart slightly. And now you take the, take the connecting rod out. You can pass that along with a paper towel so people can see some of the parts. I'm not going to put that one back in. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about this uh, connecting rod for a minute. I have gone round and round with DeWalt over this sleeve. I found out that this bearing, the bearing itself is replaceable, but the sleeve is unique. It is hardened. It is very precision. And DeWalt does not sell that separately. They want to they sell it to you as a complete assembly. And I think it's, I uh, wrote it down on my notes there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a $30 part. Yeah, it's just, just, like just, just as I have it here. So I figure that's that's worth it, you know. Rather than me trying to scrounge around and try to line up a machinist to to make that thing and then then send it out to harden it, a yeah. uh, lot of lot of risk involved, you know. Could wind up with a lot of bad parts, a lot of rework, all that kind of thing. So I just go ahead and buy the buy the whole assembly. So this one is the new hard. style. This part, because of this bearing and sleeve in here, this is one of the highest stress parts of the machine. So on probably a third of the saws that I have to service that are making noise, I usually have to wind up replacing that part. You know, especially if, if, if I didn't get to it before the, the lubri lubrication ran out on the thing. Okay, uh, next thing I'm gonna do here is install this new connecting rod in here. Now you'll notice I've turned the, turned the assembly around a few times and taken the old part out and got a new part laying here and kind of lost track of where things go. Mm -hmm. It makes a goodly bit of difference as to which side this thing goes in on. One way is going to work, one way isn't. <laughs> also, this thing is perfectly symmetrical, so it will go, it'll go either way. But at any rate, the, the big, big part of it goes down, the small part goes up. 
or the thin part. I've had to disassemble these things a time or two <laughs> because I got it, got it together wrong. Um, but because of the, the fact that the motor is behind this part, you want to put the big end of the connecting rod toward the rear. So this thing just slides, slides in there. Now, what I will do, even though I get a new connecting rod from DeWalt, first thing I do is take it apart, clean it, and lube it. So all the, uh, all of these things that I've got in my parts bin there are already lubricated, so I, I can save that amount of work. Yes? On that, now you've got that connecting rod in there. Does it matter if it's this way or this yeah, way? Yeah, that's all the same. Yeah, yeah, it does. Because what I've, what I've got, so on the back side of here, I've got the, uh, the fixed part of that, that sealed bearing. It, it, seat, it seats against that rim so on there. The yep. Yeah, so I've got, I've got the snap yeah, ring. I've got the snap ring facing out. That positions this bearing in a specific location. It is, the bearing is offset slightly. So if you get that thing in there backwards, parts are going to start rubbing together and making noise. <laughs> Now, from force of habit, what I will do is I will, I will put these things together so that the casting mark is always facing me when I got the side off. You know, they're, they're symmetrical completely, so it makes no difference. Technically, I just like to be able to see the casting mark. No, they're all down here. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at this thing carefully so I can see that the uh, uh, serrations on there are pointing out. Okay. Now then if Hans will get me some of that uh, blue stuff in the blue tube. No, the blue tube in the box. A little a small blue tube. Okay, this is the uh, the blue Loctite that I heartily recommend you use this to put one of these saws back together. No, this is not the permanent. This 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 will come apart under pressure. You put a tool on it, and it'll break loose. the The red stuff requires heat to get it apart. And I would just as soon not expose this thing to any more heat than is absolutely necessary. And what does that do, Bob? This acts like a lock washer and locks the thing in place to where it won't turn unless you put a wrench on it. No, we're not gonna use that. Okay. There should be some Allen wrenches there. Real tight. <laughs> Real tight. Oh, before I go, before I go tightening it, I just realized I was about to make a mistake there. You, you want to get that taper pin out of there. Yeah, if you tightened that, that pin would have not done real well. Well, you you would think you're tightening it, but you aren't. Okay. Okay. I usually put some pretty good torque on those. Okay. Did you see where the uh, screws for that went? Okay. Are you going to swivel those around after you connect them? 
Yep, yeah, you're uh, leave it to my cameraman to keep me straight here. Ooh, way to go, cameraman. Did you swap out that uh, sure star faster? Okay. Sure did, sir. Move your thumb. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now these nuts here are stop nuts, so they provide their own locking mechanism, so they won't uh, they won't back out because of the stresses that this thing is under. You know, you gotta you gotta use something better than a than a stop nut for that. If you should no, do it the other direction. Well, the opposite of that one? Yeah. Okay. No, this is the head. I got you. Okay, I'm holding the <coughs> need to come out just a little bit, I can't. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. Well, I have done uh, done about three of them, complete overhauls over the phone. There we go. That's good. Not yet. Okay. The other place that you want to put this uh, Loctite definitely is on this screw. This is that left hand thread motor screw. Can't remember what you were else were you using for that. Okay, so now we're ready to start putting the front yeah, half together. Which one's the top and which one's the bottom? <laughs> one with the hose. Yeah, there you go. One of the things that I do to facilitate getting these uh, thrust washers on there and getting them to stick in place is put a little bit of this really heavy lube on there. You can see the uh, relationship that that sleeve is just enough longer that it sticks out beyond the the casting and allows that uh, that sleeve to protrude through the 
And you have the thrust washer. Through the thrust washer. Oh, there. Okay. Okay. So that's there. I, to be honest with you guys, I don't see how he, well, how Bob does this. He has a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> What's the kicker to getting this to be? Here. Oh, okay. Get through from the side. See if you can I'll push it in. Use that in this. I'm not turning, I'm just I'm just using this as my You can go ahead and turn it. Is there a screw in there? We got it. Uh, no, I got it here. Need to rotate the motor a little bit. Okay. So it's in the holes where you can see it. Huh? Mm -hmm. Ready? Yep. Okay, well, too much. Okay, the reason I told uh, Hans to hold up on that is I want to make sure that those thrust washers are seated, rotate where they're supposed to. That one looks like it's in place. Yep. Okay. Okay, yep. I'll do better on this Bo one. Yeah, bottom one's easier. Considerably. It's already in. Yeah, both thrust washers are where they're supposed to be. <laughs> you know, something's, something doesn't feel right there. We're too high, I think. <laughs> this is hitting right there. Is what's hitting there now? Okay. No, no. Okay, hold on a sec. So, Bob, I replaced all the sleeves and all the bearings in one of these saws. What did it cost me? Um, about two hundred and fifty. drive yeah. in here first. Bob, was that just for parts or for labor? Just parts. Okay, back it out, please. Mm -hmm. There you go. Unless if you do it yourself. Unless if you do it yourself. Thrust bearings look good. Okay. 
Got it? I think I'm tight. Mm -hmm. Yep. You screw something up? No, I was just feeling it too. It feels good. It feels real good. I've had to take this off and on a number of times in the early days. Mm -hmm. And if you you gotta push that piece back. If you don't, you never can get it on. And it's got a track. <coughs> and there's another thing up here that I use all the time, and I saw it when it was in here, and didn't know what it was for. Well, that actually goes on top of here. Right, for one it's called of them. the wavy washing. If you don't have it on, it don't work real well. Yeah, it ain't gonna stay tight. If you don't, let me uh, see show, the, show the audience that, and the YouTube audience too. There's a, two different size wavy washers. There's one here that goes on this uh, tensioning nut. There's a bigger one that goes here. Yep. And uh, Yeah, it, it just maintains tension on these things to keep them together. And uh, I don't know how many times, probably probably 10, where I've put the side back on this this machine and that, wa that wavy washer is not in place. So that's, uh, that's something I oftentimes rehearse. <laughs> okay, let's get some... Uh, Screws in here. Okay, got it. Taken care of while you talk. Yep. I think I got to change bits, don't I? We'll change drills. Okay, drills got it. Okay. And that one stripped out. Put it back here. Did I strip it out? No, no, it was stripped out before we started. I think that one is also stripped out. But it holds a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Now we got this, you got to put that piece on or it doesn't work. Yep. Okay, and that goes in here to here. Can you see that, Mr. Cameron? Okay. In? Move just a second on it. This piece goes in that hole, and then this has to come up and be even. Yeah, occasionally to get this thing to, to work right, you may have to fiddle with that arm a little bit to lift it up and down to get it to anchor. Now then we got, got the bolt, got the right wavy washer, like and... In the wrong position. What happened? What's it's in the wrong position? In the tight tension. This? Yeah, it looks like the lever is pointing over towards Hans, right? It is. That's where it it's is. supposed to be. It should be. I can't. That would be. There was no other way to put. There's no other way. You can't get that one wrong. I've taken it off and on. It's, it's a little too tight right now. I can adjust it as I get it put together. It's just positioned that way mm -hmm. so they can assemble it and then they'll put it in the right position once okay. they get everything. Yeah, it'll yeah. move a little bit more this way. Because th this right here will determine. Yeah, we aren't ready to put that on yet. Okay. Um, this is uh, this is another part that you want to, if possible, you want to time the thing such that when you put that thing on there, you allow it overnight for it to set up before you start running the thing for any length of time. Can you put the Loctite on that? I put Loctite on it, yeah. The blue, again, the blue Loctite. Okay, I was just going to do a once over here before we try it.
Yeah. Okay, okay who's, who's, who's going to lead and who's going to sing here? Ready? <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I've done that more than once. <laughs> What's moving? But you, you, oh. start, you start running the thing and, and stuff starts jumping around on the table. Oh, I got so. What is it? Can I put this on, sir? Yep, yep. Any questions? Comments? I already brushed them out. Yep. Okay. So a couple hours of work that should do one. Um, Question. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So generally about a couple hours of work that should go through. Um, I allow about five. And that includes. Uh, you know, getting all the old lubricant out and relubing everything, blowing it out. Do you remove the existing lubricant even in the new one? Yes. I don't want to run any risk of cross contamination. Uh, typically, I like I like to use uh, just mineral spirits. That'll that'll dissolve just about any petroleum-based lubricant, and then. Uh, so once you hit that thing with the uh, air compressor that I got, it there's just mineral spirits and lubricant everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I walked back upstairs looking like it. <laughs> what do you put in it? Hmm? What lube do you use? Uh, what I prefer to use is the um, Valvoline Full Synthetic. You get it at um, Napa? Yes. Some of the other auto parts places uh, have the stuff. The only thing is I can't, most of the auto parts places around me, I can't get the point across to them that that's what I want because we don't speak the same language. <laughs> so I, I go to Napa and bypass that problem. And, and that's the thing with the wall. About, you know, if you get it in and when it's brand new and re -lube it, it'll run good for a long time. But I want to thank you, uh, Bob. <laughs>